Hi there, my name's Patrick. Uh, welcome back to my studio. It's been a long time since uh, I was last here. I think going back to August last year when I did the 30 day challenge. Anyway, I'm back now. Um, I've been concentrating mostly on oil paints over the last year. Um, because I was getting stuck in a bit of a rut with uh, watercolours, I wasn't getting as much enjoyment out of it as I had in the past. Um, whether that's because I didn't feel I was moving forward, um, I was kind of stuck in a plateau and I felt like my colours were becoming very anchored in browns and greys and I don't know, they just weren't really doing what I wanted, um, which is probably, you know, it's my fault, obviously, you know, it's, it's up to me to coach myself and to sort of bring myself on and sort of develop my skills but I didn't think I was I don't you know so anyway so I launched into some doing some oil painting which I had touched on previously a few years back I did a little bit of oil painting but not a lot um, and I've launched into painting dogs in oil paint or animals in oil painting in oil paints and that's been very successful for me I've had quite a bit of work from it and uh, thoroughly en I'm thoroughly enjoying the process of doing it um, I don't know it's great fun but I appreciate people still like watercolor, and watercolor is a fantastic medium for taking out into the, into, you know, for, for sketching and sort of getting work, which I still do. Um, you know, uh, catching a quick sketch, you, you don't have to take much materials with you. You can just go out there and um, get a painting down pretty quickly. Unlike oil painting as well, when I do paint a lot outside my oils, but you have to then cart everything out with you, and it's a much bigger operation. Uh, to to set up so anyway going back to what we're doing now um, I'm going to paint a picture of one of the oils I've just completed um, it's of Toby our little border well he's passed now but it was our border terrier um, but um, I'm going to paint a picture of him um, well, I've painted it in oils, and I'm going to work from the oil sketch, and also I've got a reference photo, I'm going to work from two of him, um, and see how it goes. Now, I'm not expecting a lot from the watercolour today, because it is such a long time since I've been painting in watercolours, and I've got a funny feeling I'm going to try and be bogged down in too much detail, which I can't kind of fight with watercolour. That's one thing that I used to, I, I used to really aim for loose paintings, but I, so sometimes I could achieve it, but not always. Um, but let's see what we do today um, and uh, I hope you like it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it first then I'm going to narrate over it um, at a later date and then obviously give it to you guys on YouTube or Facebook whatever, wherever um, because the idea of t I'm just because I'm just getting back into it the idea of talking as I'm painting watercolour you know as I'm actually doing it I just don't think I can get my head around it so uh, I'm going to do the uh, Painting first, and then I'm going to do a bit of narration on top. So anyway, sit back and enjoy it. Hope you enjoy it. Um, hope I won't waffle on too much. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Coming up now. Okay, so I'm just starting off with a basic line drawing. There's just a little bit of drawing in this video. I haven't done the whole thing. Um, just give you an idea how I work. Um, I'm painting on 140 Arsh, um, what is it, hot pressed, uh, cold pressed paper, sorry. It's got a slight tooth on it. And uh, with with hindsight, I'm wondering whether I'd actually get um, cleaner results if I was to use uh, the smooth paper. I think it's the hot pressed. Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm sure it's hot pressed is smooth, cold pressed is got a tooth to it. Um, so I'm, anyway, I'm just refining the uh, the, the drawing. Um, I think I could have gone into a little bit more detail with the drawing because I've been watching other artists on YouTube painting watercolours and those that seem to have the greatest success do very clean drawings. Well, that's in my opinion. Um, others might have a different idea on that, but... Uh, I have. I, mean, I see it as a much cleaner painting, and it's often down to the. Well, it seems to always be down to the clarity of their drawing, um, mapping out the what they're going to be painting in a really quite, in a very clean, lined way. 
Uh, my drawing is always a little bit messy, um, not the neatest um, or easy, clearly defined drawings, I suppose. So that's something I'm going to be working on. Maybe that might help a bit when I get around to the painting, especially on key areas, like when you get to painting the nose and things like that. We'll come back to the nose on the dog in a bit because that didn't all work out as I was hoping for. But here, my objective here is just to tint the paper all over. And all I'm doing is adding a, a wash of burnt sienna, ultramarine, I think it's tapped and cobalt blue, um, in various mixtures of warm and cool, just to get that underpainting. Um, so I can then apply washes on top of that later. So there's some cool colour going in there just to where the shadows are going to be, basically. And the warmer colours are where the highlights are, essentially. And you can see, I'm, I'm using there. This painting is probably, the actual dog size is possibly just a bit bigger than A4. Something like that. And that's another thing I think might be it work in my favour. I don't have a problem in oil paints, painting smaller, but in watercolour I do for some reason. Um, is if I was to actually start the painting by going bigger. by Because again, I notice a lot of people who have success tend to paint slightly uh, bigger portraits. And that means when you get to painting things like the eyes and the nose, you've got a little bit more space to work with. Um, but uh, But then again, I say that, and I've seen some lovely paintings of people, miniatures of watercolours of dogs. So it's, I guess it's all down to the kind of person you are and how you want to, how you paint, I suppose. So I'm using a, I think it's a three quarter inch flat here just to fill in the main areas. I'm just adding a darker mixture here of um, burnt sienna and ultramarine. Just varying the wash again, keeping the wash more interesting by adding warm and cool colours, not just all one flat colour. So that's how you can add a little bit of life to your paintings, just by varying those washes a little bit and not making it just a blank flat colour. A bit more warmer colour just dropped in there. And that's just a bit of burnt sienna. Now we've got the first wash down. I've tinted the nose with some colour. I really struggled with the nose, to be honest. You can see to the right of this drawing, I've, <laughs> I had a practice on the right-hand side. That didn't go any better, strangely. So I just thought, oh, well, well I'll, go, I'll end up going for it and doing what I can do. But when I start applying the darks here, I don't think it goes as well as it could. Or I think I should have just left it at that stage. Um, instead of trying to work it more. I think that's, again, I think we're all guilty of that, aren't we? We we tend to overwork our paintings and, you know, do things that we don't really need to do, that don't enhance it. They end up just making it look fussy and overworked. And that's my opinion of this painting. Um, when I look at the whole thing, it's somewhat overworked and it's not the way I want to be going now. I want to be um, keeping it more simple and just not so much brushwork, if you like. There we go, I'm starting to model the nose now. Again, I'm just using the same colours, burnt sienna and ultramarine. So it's a very simple palette, this painting. I didn't use an awful lot of colours, to be honest. Um, what was it? I used, as I've said, I think I've used ultramarine, bit of cobalt blue, burnt sienna, a bit of uh, cadmium yellow, um, and a little bit of Viridian green in places. But that's, you know, that wasn't really necessary. You could get away without it. So it's a very simple palette of colours. You don't need anything special. And um, just in case anybody's interested, this painting is painted with Windsor and Newton, art, I'm sorry, not artist, student 
paints. So if you're a bit conscious of the old budget and, you know, the price of paints are astronomical, you know, especially the higher series paints, um, have a go with the students. I thought, you know, they do, they do great, uh, they bring great results. If I'm doing commissions for people, obviously I don't use student colours, I use artist quality. Um, I use often, I use the um, Jackson's professional range, I find them excellent. Um, and uh, De La Rowney, I enjoy too, the artist quality paints, so very good. Just sort of cut, trying to get some of the darks into the bearded area of Toby. At this stage. It's funny, having spent, what, near on six, seven months concentrating on oil painting, possibly longer, I don't know. Um, I thought, you know, with watercolours, I'm sure you're all aware of this, you seem to have one shot at it, or, you know, yeah, you seem to have one go at actually creating a painting. If you make a big error, error sorry, that, that's it. You know, your work is over, essentially. Um, you've got to start again. But saying that, I found a few ways of getting around that in the past, and that's if I do a painting that I'm not 100% happy with. Well, not 100%, but I'm kind of like, I, I question areas of it. I've used um, gouache to recover areas of a painting, and that's worked. I, I pronounce it gouache because that's how I hear most people pronounce it. Uh, but uh, we also there's also a pronunciation gouache, um, so we're all talking about the same thing. Um, and I've anyway I found using that can really help, especially things like eyes and nose is um, it really helps to give you a second chance basically so it's worth having some now if I'm doing the whole painting if I was trying to sort of work a whole painting I've especially on landscapes I've and I've done a painting and I think well that's just dreadful I offer I will use and I have done more so in the past than I do now but uh, I've used pastels on top to uh, get a good effect so if you've got lots of paintings that you're not really happy with, I'm sure we've all got many, um, buy a good set of uh, pastels or something like that and uh, work pastel on top. I've had some, you know, so I've done some very pleasing paintings in the past. More, more so, this was quite, quite a long time ago. And I think as my painting became a bit more consistent, I wasn't as reliant on it. Um, using the pastels but if you're just starting out and you think oh that's a disaster and you're worried that you're wasting paper and all that sort of thing get yourself a tin of pastels um, and and use it for pastel practice you know, it will only help your watercolor painting um, if you could in the long run so that's a useful thing to do right let's get back to the painting so we're here I'm working on the year and I'm just starting to have the darker colors now Again, it's the same mix of burnt sienna, ultramarine. Just creating the different variations in tone and value. So honestly, I'm warming it up a bit here and there. A bit more burnt sienna went there. Very subtle colour changes. Um, but... If you if you if you don't do it, it will make the painting look even f flatter. It, it will make it just won't give it any life at all. So you've got to sort of don't just look at the whole area and think, well, that's a kind of a, I know, a dark bluey, browny colour. Try and open your eyes to the uh, subtle colour shifts in the coat, and they can be very subtle sometimes. You know, they can be very hard to see, but if you really spend some time looking, they're there. The colour shifts are there. And again, the colour shifts are there with warm and cool. 
and that that's a, you know really important in a painting to get the warm and cool colours in. So that that's yeah, and it's funny actually as I'm as you narrate a painting as I'm kind of talking about it, I'm thinking more things that uh, that have helped me in the past. But really studying that side of painting, will, which is value. Value is more important than colour, a lot of people say. And I do tend to agree with that. You can paint a painting in any colours. As long as you get the value right, it will look pretty good. Um, and the drawing right to a certain degree, you know, nice drawing. Um, but the value is really, really important. Um, so, yeah. You can now, this is where I was getting a little bit disappointed with the painting it was coming on I thought oh dear I'm getting into that fiddling and, and messing around and I wasn't overly chuffed with this result to be honest but I thought I'd share it with you anyway because you know I'm, I'm getting back into watercolour somewhat and uh, you know it's a good opportunity for me to Live and the skills up, but I tell you, I when I when I, <clears throat> excuse me, when I started this, I thought, oh, I'm going to really pop some bright colours into this painting and try and make it a bit jazzy, a bit you know current if you like, just move it up, you know the saturation of colour a bit more, the chroma a bit, but I just felt I couldn't do it, you know, it's, I was I was keep I guess it's in me, I'm gonna keep trying to I'm keep being drawn to painting it as closely as I see it to the reference images. Um, I find it very hard to let go and interpret it in a realistic but more colourful way, if that makes sense. I'm not sure we all search for that. But I see some lovely paintings sometimes. You think, well, crikey, that's a real exaggeration of the colours, but it works. And it looks so lovely. You know, they look so joyful because they're full of colour. Um... And people don't really question the fact that it's not 100% faithful to the original. So I suppose it's... And I think that would really help my painting um, completely. You know, it would really benefit me um, to be able to use that. So anyway, I'm just applying more dark. And again, it's the same colours. Ultramarine, burnt sienna, a bit of viridian in there. Just to vary it a little bit. A bit more blue in places. Trying to make his little white beard stand out. But that area around his left eye is too dark. But when I start to work on the rest of the painting, that balances up somewhat. Because often an area can look too dark until you've got the, the areas done around it. It can often not sit very well so be patient with your paintings because I've often found that when you do a watercolour you can go through some stages of the painting you think oh my good lord it's just it's not working it's dreadful but you'll be surprised sometimes they just come good and then you think wow you know this this has really helped this has really worked so don't give up on your painting till you finish it right just adding the rest of his coat again same mixtures just some sort of scrubby brushwork to sort of suggest fur and that sort of stuff on, on Toby. Some darks, some final darks going in on the ear. Just to give it a bit more definition and whatnot. But I did enjoy this actually. And when I think about it, even though I'm not 100% happy with the result, it's too, it's been overworked in my opinion. I am pleased with the result considering I haven't painted in watercolour for quite a long time so hopefully you can see a steady progression in my work and you know in turn you can learn about yours over the next uh, six months or so. In the future I will be um, posting more on YouTube because I've actually reduced my hours at work now um, and I'm going to be spending more time on painting. So, uh, you know, I just feel it's that right time now for me. So hopefully we can see, uh, see a progression. Now, I wasn't sure whether to do the background or not. 
but I talked myself into it. Um, just uh, this is just a various mix of old cobalt, I think, or ultramarine, and a bit of crimson and a bit of viridian green in places. And I felt this helped to actually make his beard stand out on the right against the white paper. Also, when I started to put the background in, I started to realise that the nose was not strong enough. It was just too pale. And I knew something had to be done about that. And unfortunately, <laughs> when I go back and fiddle, it doesn't work out very well. You'll see shortly. So just roughing up the edge around his beard. I often get questions like how long did this painting take to paint from start to finish? And it's probably about two hours work, I would guess. If that gives you, obviously I've shortened it down for a video. You don't want to watch every little bit, but uh, I'm sure but about two hours work. <clears throat> Interested to know your thoughts on the background. So if you've got any comments on that, of whether I should have left it or uh, in your opinion, it's better. This is where I started messing with the nose. I'd gone too dark, so what I decided to do was, as I said earlier, bring some gouache out to try and restore some highlights, subtle highlights on his nose. But we're very close to the end now. And as I said earlier, I just feel it's a little bit overworked. I'd be interested to know your comments what you think um, but I think it's a little bit overworked and I like to get fresher washes on him slightly more sort of fresher but uh, you know leave me what you know tell me what you think don't worry you're not gonna offend me I really don't mind there we go last touches to his nose and you see there, you see the the, more, the paler uh, bluey marks. Now they're, used, they're done with gouache and they help to uh, sort of restore some highlights to his nose. Here we go, I go a little bit too bright there. And I fiddle back and forth at this stage. I'm messing around. But the gouache was really good at helping me bring it back to um, to somewhat you know, a, a reasonable st uh, a reasonable standard, if you like. Anyway, that's it. I'll take a picture of the uh, the whole thing and put it on in a second so you can see that. But uh, I really appreciate you watching the video. I hope, you know, just chatting about it has helped you a little bit. But until the next painting, take care. Bye for now.